Hello! In my last video we looked at the A590 and managed to get a full 2MB of fast RAM working. In this video we are going to take a look at the hard drive side of it, see if it works and if not we will attempt to fix it. Originally this A590 would have come with a 20MB hard disk drive and here is the interesting thing. Did you know that Epson used to make hard disk drives? Well take a look at the label on the back of the drive. This clearly states Epson as the manufacturer and the model HMD755 as the type. Later A590s came with a Western Digital hard drive. It's a shame the original drive isn't here either, I couldn't find any photos of it on the internet, but I did find this text file. With a component life of 5 years and a mean time before failure of around 2.3 years, I guess I shouldn't be that surprised, although that would have been continuous use. This Hi590 however came with this 4GB hard disk drive and I'm interested to see what's on it. As I'll be powering this from the Amiga, I'm not going to leave this powered on for long. We interrupt this special broadcast to bring you some breaking news. The case design featured in the previous video may not actually belong to this hard disk. The original case design looks more like this. If you happen to have an empty shell like this featuring this design or know the whereabouts of such a case then please get in touch. Thank you for your time. I'm going to set the first dip switch on the back of the A590 to enable auto boot and see what happens. Well seems to be freezing at this point. Just in case it was waiting for something or needed to wait to time out I left this for several minutes. There was no activity on the hard disk light either. So I'm going to switch the dip switch back off again and try booting the A590 setup disk. So this is interesting, the setup disk is freezing too. I took a look at the startup sequence to see what commands run on this disk and it's getting stuck at the point where bind drivers is called. This would be where the device driver for the A590 is loaded and started. Something must be wrong with the A590 somewhere. Taking a look at the A590 PCB from last time, we can start by ignoring anything to do with the RAM as we know it works perfectly and to be 100% sure we will set the RAM jumper to amnesia. So taking a look at what's left as that's where the fault must be, well these are the logic chips of some kind. Now I suspect if these were faulty then the RAM wouldn't have worked either so I think we can ignore those for now too. This leaves us with the ROMs, although I suspect they're ok and I don't actually know if they're used at all if auto boot is turned off. This is the DMAC. I hope this isn't faulty, this part may be difficult to replace. There's also this strange chip that has something to do with the SCSI interface and I don't think that can be replaced. And finally the SCSI controller chip WD33C93 made by Western Digital. Well as I said before this is a very early version and apparently has some faults. You can apparently swap this out with a newer AM33C93A chip which is supposed to be a perfect drop in replacement with all the bugs fixed and as it's still made you can purchase them quite easily. So I've ordered one and here it is. As I now have my improved camera I can zoom in for a closer look. I've got this interesting chip puller and it does make things a little bit easier so let's get that chip swapped out. I'm booting from the A590 setup disk here and I've sped this up a little but well I guess it's not locking up anymore. That being said it's still not a good result. I'll try this again with the auto boot ROM dip switch enabled. Hmm same result so there must be a different or another fault. This board's starting to be a bit like whack-a-mole. Well I'm not exactly sure what that proves. I find it hard to believe that this new chip is faulty but as it won't boot with either chip it's either not as compatible as I was led to believe or something else is wrong on the board. I think given the state of the DMAT chip and how damaged it is this should be the next target. Now I thought getting hold of a replacement one of these would be really difficult, I mean there's none on eBay but if you take a look on Amibay there's someone selling new old stock DMAC version 2 chips. So I ordered one and within a week it was here so that leaves us the task of swapping out the chip. Now to remove the DMAC you have two possible options, one and usually the favourite is to flip the board over and try and push the chip out using these holes. Now the more observant amongst you will have noticed I've removed the two power wires that were allowing the board to self power off the Amiga. I've removed them just in case that was causing a problem too and I'm now powering this with an external power supply. But a while back I had to perform a repair on my Amiga 500 plus and because I had to remove the Agnes chip I happened to have this PLCC extraction tool. It's not the best and even with this it's still not that easy to get out but it's better than trying to prise it out with a screwdriver which can damage the socket and the chip. Don't do that. At least try to find the right tool. Now before powering on there's one further step. If we take a look at the A590 service manual we can see the original DMAC listed here 
But interestingly, if you take a look at the next line, you can see the version 2 of the DMAC is also listed as a substitute. The reason I mention this is because that if you substitute the version 2 DMAC, then the chip U101 isn't needed anymore. But that's not all, there's one more change that has to be made. You also have to connect up jumper 8, which happens to be right next to the chip we have to remove. Now I don't want this necessarily to be a permanent modification, so I'm going to fit a jumper here rather than a link wire. So first I'm going to solder this pin header in so we can attach a jumper. And once soldered in place, I'm going to remove the U101 chip with this handy chip puller. You push down and it opens the hands on the sides. And once aligned, you pull the lever up and it extracts a chip. And here's something you might like, a little homemade mega large jumper. It's actually three stuck together with the link wire joining them. So with the new DMAC fitted, the chip labelled 390938-01 removed, and the jumper added, we're ready for another round of testing. And I'm going to try this with the A590 boot disc again, with auto boot disabled. Interestingly, like this, the drive LED now comes on, and it's no longer locking up or crashing on boot. But once we get into workbench, there's still nothing new. Now the drive could be faulty, but it does sound as if it's actually trying to work. And I'm still unsure about that SCSI drive controller chip replacement. So it's still not working. No drive appearing. And if I go into HD Toolbox, it doesn't find a hard disk drive either. Now, what I really need at this point is another A590, but they're not that easy to come by. But I did stumble across some more of the WD33C93 chips on eBay, and they're supposed to be new old stock. So I'm going to fit one of these and try again. Now, as there seems to be some activity on the LED, I thought I'd give auto booting a go. So, I enabled the switch for auto boot on the back of the drive and turned on the Amiga. Turning it on, it started to auto boot. Now this is interesting, it's finding the hard disk and attempting to boot from it. But something here is intermittent. First we get checksum errors, then on reboot I'm getting a non-DOS disk warning. So I decided to boot from the workbench disk to see what's going on. There's some new disks, but they're not at all readable. Very strange. So I disabled the auto boot jumper and booted back into the A590 setup disk. And finally we have workbench, but no disks. Weird. So clearly there's something still wrong, and at this point I spotted another A590 on eBay, which turned out to be revision 7. And this one even has a working 20 megabyte XT hard disk inside. Note how the Fred and Wilmer LEDs poke through the metal shielding on this one. And taking a look at the lid this time, you can see that they're red and green LED diffusers. Weird. And removing the hard disk, we can see the Rev7 board populated with 1 megabyte of RAM and version 4.6 ROMs. With the few samples I've seen of SCSI and XT hard disks, it clearly makes sense to put the connectors on the board where they are on the Rev7, based on where the cables connect to the drives. And this A590 works too, including the XT hard disk, and when booted properly shows off some of the earliest examples of digital signage I've ever seen. What's great about the A590 is you can actually connect to SCSI or multiple SCSI drives at the same time, so I'll take a backup of this before it fails. This, as far as I'm concerned, is a known working unit. Now I have two choices at this point. I could swap the hard drives or check the chips. Now I'm fairly confident the hard disk is good, so I'm going to temporarily borrow the DMAC chip from this board and put it in mine. I've also re-enabled the auto jumper and I'm booting from the workbench disk. And look, four drive icons with names. Sadly, they're all empty. I guess this drive must have been wiped before shipping. But that proves this board is good, just something incompatible about the DMAX or the DMAC version 2 is faulty, which is unlikely. I also tried the DMAC version 2 in the known working board, and it stopped working properly with exactly the same fault. So I've restored the A590 back to how it was. However, there's one thing left that I haven't checked, and that's the ROMs. I don't even know what version they are, so I decided to try and Google, and the only result that came up was the WinUEA source code implying these are probably version 4.4 ROMs, so very, very early. I've ordered some version 7 ROMs, but I had a thought. Is there a way I can try these out before they arrive? Well, while googling around, I stumbled across an unofficial update to bind drivers with the version 7 ROMs built in, and I thought, let's give it a try. So I modified my A590 setup disk and replaced the contents with the files, and something amazing happened. The yellow hard disk flickered a few times, and when I got to Workbench, I was greeted with the rest of the disk icons. So I'm guessing that the 4.4 and 4.6 ROMs are probably just too old to support the DMAC2 properly. Now I can test this theory, as my version 7 ROMs have finally arrived, so let's get them installed. The version 7 ROMs come with so many fixes and features, especially compared to the version I have, and include support for much larger hard disks. The downside is they no longer support old XT hard disks, so I'm not going to get any for the other A590 because I want to keep that one as it is. And with these new ROM chips installed, 
the Amiga wouldn't even boot. It stayed on a grey screen. So I restored the original ROMs and everything went back to how it was before. Now I wasn't sure if these ROMs were faulty or it was a further issue with the A590. So I tried them in the other one I have and it did the same thing. After some troubleshooting with the supplier, they decided to send me a replacement set which have just arrived. So, are you getting deja vu yet? Let's get them ROM chips installed, again. And once I've swapped the ROMs, I'm going to start by simply booting the workbench disk and see if all the icons appear properly. I'll make sure the auto boot switch is turned on too. I've sped this up, but as you can see we finally get to workbench and all the drive icons now appear again. Now there's one more test. I'm going to remove the workbench disk and reboot and see if it attempts to boot from the SCSI hard disk. Now there's nothing on those disks, so I'm assuming it would boot, but hopefully this time without any disk errors. Excellent! I'm going to put the workbench disk back in the drive and load workbench to check that it's all working. Fantastic! It appears to be fully operational. So that just leaves a few more things that need to be done. The first being, this A590 is over 30 years old. So let's give it a bath. <laughs> Now that it's clean, let's put it all together. Remember this came with no screws or anything, so I've managed to find the various different kits which have the parts in enough to screw it all back together, at least how it was originally intended to be. And here we have it! From the outside it doesn't look that much different from how it did to start with. However it's nice that a small piece of history, especially an early model such as this one, is now working again thanks to a new DMAC, replaced SCSI controller and upgraded ROMs. Whilst fixing this I must have read the A590 schematics enough times to almost memorise them. Then there's the time I sat with an oscilloscope to check all the signals were as they should have been. I didn't cover that in the video because, well, to be honest, it didn't reveal anything and it would have been boring. Now spinning discs are so last year, so in the next video we're going to take a look at replacing the spinning disc with something that uses solid state storage. So if you don't want to miss that, be sure to like this video, subscribe, click the notification bell. Thanks for watching.
and I'll see you in the next one.